Hello, everybody. Welcome to Awaken Positive Power, where myself, Jemima Godsell, and beautiful Darcy Marta, my co-host. Hello, Darcy. Uh, we bring you each week topics surrounding mental health issues. And here, mental health matters. I'm also an ambassador for Thera Expressions Meditation in Casper, Wyoming. Check them out. And they, too, mental health matters. Each week, Darcy and I bring different topics, as we just said. And before we go on, there is a disclaimer down below. But more importantly, there is a 988 national US number for mental health and suicide awareness and prevention that you can call um, so you know you're never alone. That's what we are too are trying to bring out is that we are never alone with our thoughts, our experiences. Someone always can relate and it may seem extreme sometimes, it may seem minimal sometimes, but we can't ever judge anyone's experience with their own stuff. And here we are just trying to make it normal. Um, welcome. And Darcy, welcome, my love. Hey. So today, guys, yes, yeah, so I'm kind of the guinea pig in this channel as if you've watched these. So, <laughs> so today's a bit embarrassing. But I'm owning it. I say 100% authentic. Um, I had an experience. I'll just run through the experience again, Das. I had an experience. I was doing kundalini yoga inside where instead of outside because it's freezing. And my lover was still in bed. And awesome. So I'm doing it. But then he picks up his phone. So and yet, you were doing your yoga on the bed. On the bed outside in the, in the lounge room. And he was on the real bed. Yeah, so it was separated. But I could, could see him you know, through the RV. Okay. But he and, was not on camera. No, 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 he, he was, he was asleep. I, I mean, he was, I was just doing that because it's so cold. So yeah, exactly. Setting up, there's absolutely no reason why I should even be bringing this up. Correct. You'll be like, so what? It's on his phone. Exactly. And inside me, this anxiety built over like, what are you doing? You're always on your phone. What the, I got really, and I was like in the, the, the real Jemima, <laughs> the, the one that wasn't triggered with something was going, what the hell is going on? Like, I got so embarrassed by myself, and I mean to say embarrassed because it was hu humiliating, really. I haven't brought this up to him, and if you're watching this now, I love you. <laughs> but it was, I really wanted to bring this today to try and un unravel this trigger because it scared me that I behaved unnecessarily, and it got me so tense. And I'm in the Kundalini class, which is beautiful yoga, which releases the tension. Thank God, because it was really... I, I just don't understand it, Dust. I don't understand it, and it scared me, and it was... I know it stems from somewhere, but I'm just not sure why that trigger is so, um, it's disturbing. It's not, un it's unhealthy. It's a very unhealthy trigger. Well, I have to give you, <clears throat> I have to give you praise for one thing. So, right. It's not all a total loss. Your <sighs> awareness of the fact that this is a trigger and an issue is wonderful. So give yourself credit for being aware that you've got this trigger and this issue. Yeah. Most people, with if they didn't know they had that trigger or that issue, they would automatically lashed out, put their class on pause, yeah. stepped aside and gone, what are you doing again? I didn't, you know, they would have gone after the person and created the problem or potentially right after the class, you could have gone after him and read him the riot act and et cetera. So good for you for owning it. Mm. And seeing that it's your issue yeah. and understanding that it's something that you need to take care of for you. And, and you got to give yourself a pat on the back for that because that's a huge accomplishment. Okay? I guess. So, I guess, yeah. So let's it's hard to give a pat on the back at the moment because it just feels kind of shocking. It feels like, and I want to, I want to um, detach myself from that part of me. And that's not what you meant to do. I meant to love that part. So then it will stop doing that. And yeah, I'm finding it very yeah, hard. I wouldn't say you need to love that part or detach from that part. Those are big, those are big mindsets. Okay. Attachment and love. Yeah. Yeah. Those are two big, huge mindsets that are, um, that require a lot of practice and work and understanding, et cetera. What I would work for is where you're at a little bit stronger, which is awareness and equanimity. There's mm -hmm. your word. Treating all things equal, turning okay. it into a place of balance, and a but how is it? Oh, he will get there. Hang on, Sorry. just like the breath comes and goes, the sounds come and go, touch comes okay. and goes, thoughts come and go, feelings come and go. You are here now. 
in this moment, the temperature of the room, the world outside is what it is. The cars are moving on the road. The world is spinning. The war in Ukraine, our mothers, our sisters, our lovers, their lives. Everything is moving on its path and you are here now. And it's sound, thought, touch, feeling, sight. And allowing the world to be what it is takes practice. So um, hang on a sec. So let's go. You said you were doing the Kundalini Yoga, which is supposed to relieve tension, physical tension. Yeah. Remember. Oh, no, no, but Kundalini does connect you, your mind with your chakras. It really gets, that's, that's the beautiful thing about it. You are getting the connection. Yes. You have to practice it. So good for you. Now you have a new test to deepen your practice. All these things deepen our practice. It's yeah, mental true. tension physical tension and emotional tension. Yeah. They all go together. And again, so you can be working, you know, your physical tension and realize as you're doing it that you have a lot of mental tension. And again, mm -hmm. every thought has an emotion. Yep. Subtle is significant. Doesn't have to be big. It's a little one or a big one, right? So breathing into, okay, here's a thought, right? Here's a thought, here's a thought, a feeling. A feeling, a thought, a feeling, touch, touch. I think we did that um, last week. Last week. That's yep. why it's a really important meditation to practice because it teaches you detachment so that you don't grasp on. You know, I think I told the story about the lady with the trash truck, right? Yep, yep, sure did. Right. And so she was so attacked. Oh, here comes the trash truck. Right? And then she'd get all tense and ah, I can't go back to sleep. It ruined my sleep. But once she learned to practice sound, thought, touch, feeling, sound, talk, however, the, however your awareness rotates for you, the next time that when she got better and better at it, when the trash truck came, she could go sound, yes. feeling, thought, 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 feeling, sound, sound. And then it was gone. Okay. So but you have to, but you have to understand your trigger first to then be able to, to understand where it comes from, to then be able to go, okay, now I know where it comes from. And now, okay. You don't need to. You don't need to know where the trigger comes from. Because then all you're going to try to do is shift the blame on some old past trauma. Right. But you yeah. are here now. And so if right. it's triggering you in this moment, then just deal with this in this moment. And so let's go back. We can go back to why it triggers you. We can look at the concept of embarrassment. I think embarrassment's great. You know, you were embarrassed by your feelings. Yeah. Right. Well, more my thoughts. Your, are, and your thoughts. Yeah, right? my so. thoughts first. And then my feelings were actually against the thought, which was quite, I was, I was having a battle within, you know, I've gone, I don't want to feel that, like that's, or think that, because that's just, and because I knew it was bringing me to this insecure, paranoid, jealous place, which is something I'm really working to move myself, because there's no need to feel that. Resistance, tension plus resistance equals suffering. I have to find that quote again. What you resist persists. I'm not going to think that. I'm not going to think that. I'm not, yeah, yeah. Uh, why am I thinking that? Oh, I can't stop it. I don't know why. I can't say, rah, 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 rah. Woo. But when you just go thought, feeling, yeah. thought, feeling, right, touch. So right now I would say that you are identifying as being, wanting to be the center of his universe. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing Kundalini yoga, shouldn't he be inspired to get up out of bed and do it with you or watch you or be present with you or maybe sleep or go make breakfast or all those wonderful other things that people should do while they're doing instead of looking at that phone which means that they are you know the phone affects me so much yes, it it, it, me. it's like being for me people with phones it's like being with people who are stoned or drunk yeah not present you can't make a connection you know they're in whatever place they're in 
and they're right in front of you with it. Yeah. But at the same time, sometimes people need their distraction moment. They yeah, and I mean, I, he wasn't even involved with my moment. So what the hell am I babbling about? Right. I, oh, so I'm so like disturbed by my brain. Like sometimes it just makes me feel like where where's the recovery? Like you know, right this there. is it's, your recovery is is <sighs> evident because you're of your awareness. That's your recovery. Just because you know something doesn't mean that you can, you know, be one hundred percent about it. You know, just because I know about yoga doesn't make me a yogi, right? Just because I know about meditation doesn't make me a supreme being. You know, just because I know um, that I about health and eating healthy doesn't make me, you know, perfectly healthy and, you know, stronger than everybody else. You know, it's it's all practice. It's all practice. And the better you get at understanding your triggers and your processes, the more tricky the universe will throw you. Um, <laughs> some practices to meet to make right. sure that you are truly honoring your practice right you know an acting teacher a long time time ago gave me an amazing phrase he said is it you in the art or the art in you right so as an actor i went what okay if it's you in the art get a publicist get a personal trainer get your photos get yourself out there do something you in the art get yourself out there as an actor get yourself out there that's you in the art if it's the art in you it's about oh am i reading my scripts today am i you know practicing my voice and my warm ups am i working on character work am i you know looking for play readings and films to be in you know it's me and the art right i mean it's the art in me that needs to be expressed the art in me needs it's the same thing with spirituality it's the same thing with health and healing is it you in the spirituality practice or is it the spirituality practice in you mm, interesting and if it's the spirituality practice in you then all these things triggers difficulties um obstacles to your practice on multi levels becomes the spirituality in you and again the biggest thing is to forgive the self yeah right yeah whoops there's a trigger whoops so as you look at that trigger now how are you going to cope with that right as you look at that trigger you're going to say haha there's my trigger today how do i want to deal with it today how do i want to deal with it instead of it dealing with me right instead of it controlling me how do i want to deal with that right now in this moment because each moment's going to be different yeah yeah right so if he's got downtime and i'm preoccupied with something else and he's on the phone how do i want to allow myself to spiritually deal with that i would say breathe into your feelings breathe. yeah breathe it out make a mental note be sure to laugh at yourself oh there's that freaking trigger again <laughs> it's like, oh, really and um and honor your feelings don't resist your feelings it makes me feel crappy i feel like crying and screaming okay. where do i feel it in my body it's about that resistance isn't it it's true if the more you resist the more it persists it really is true because i'm feeling it now like going yeah i wonder if uh, next time well, hopefully not next time but it probably will happen um if I do, oh, there it is, and lovingly laugh and just go, oh, you know, that makes me feel a horrible feeling that. If horrible. You can, if you can't, that's fine. If the feelings come up, honor what they are. Wow, I just got a surge of rage. Okay, I'm aware of that. I don't have to turn that into a loving feeling. I have to just listen to that surge of rage, breathe into it, and release my grasp on it release my attachment to it or my need to control that rage. I'm going to feel it and release it in breath. You do breath work. That's yeah. exactly what that's for. Breathing into where you feel it in your body. Is that rage in your stomach? Is it in your chest? Is it in your throat? Is it in your face? Is it in your hand? You breathe in and to it, right into it and breathe it out and keep moving through it. And it's touch, thought, feeling it's not trigger why who 
how big, how much, I gotta mm -hmm. love it. Cause it's just yeah. this touch, feeling, thought, touch, feeling, right? Sound, sound. Now in terms of um, the after effects of it, like I'm very, I'm very um, see-through. People can kind of see what goes on. My, my moods are quite, my energy is quite big. Let's just say that. And so when I shift into a mood, people can feel it. Yeah. And so especially this is like, you know, it's like, what's wrong? And I didn't want to say what was wrong because I thought, oh my God, this is so offensive. You know, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. But, you know, you could feel something was wrong. And then it concerned him. And I thought, I want, I didn't know how to handle that. I thought, no, it's fine. Then I had to sort of breathe because I was still tense and going, Ugh. and I was still angry at him for no reason. You know, like oh, it was just an icky feeling. But I didn't know how to handle the question, the loving question of, you know, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And in a, in a pleasant way. And I thought, oh, my God, this is horrible. Please don't speak anymore, Jemima. I just... <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I I say, you don't have to apologize for feeling. Yeah, but what about... Your feelings or your thoughts. You can just say, I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm having big, icky thoughts and feelings. I'm coping. That's all. Okay. Okay. I'm having big, icky thoughts and feelings right now. I'm coping. I'm dealing. I'll talk to you in a little bit until I can get a handle on it. I love you. Go away. Yeah, totally. But then, but then, what happens get when it's like? Reach of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, save your life! Run! <laughs> I'm not joking, people. I'm not joking. <laughs> Could also have a little flasher button somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it goes on, stay away. Oh, that's a good one, actually. That's not my work. Um, now, but what happens then when, when he asks lovingly, but what, um, what's it about then? You know, I like. Just say, I can't, yeah, it's just. I just can't. I just it's just can't. icky thoughts and feelings. I'm, yep. I'm coping. I'm dealing. I'll talk to you later. It, in our, it's not about you, honey. Don't worry. Everything's okay with us. Ah. So if, he's, you. if he's watching this, oops, you're going to hear me say, it's not about you, hon. <laughs> and now you're lying to me. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> you're a sensitive lover is going to take on, you know, yeah. oh, they're not feeling. Can I fix it? Can I help That's them? That's All the way. Beautiful love. Codependency is going to make them say, oh, it must be me. It must be us. She's going to go. She doesn't want to do this anymore. Be here. I mean, he, he, who knows where he's tripping out, right? You're tripping <laughs> out. So he, I'm sure he has his own trippy place to go to. And I'll just hug, hug and then just say it's fine. They'll probably yeah. break the ice anyway. Yeah. You just I, own it. I have big icky thoughts and feelings right now. I'm dealing with it and healing from it. I'm, and it's not about you. Everything's okay. I just got to deal with my garbage and I will. And I am. I am. And I think that's good for everyone to know, you know, 100% authentic. Like saying that if you were in a situation with, that, with your partner or somebody else, you know, being 100% authentic and saying, I do have icky big feelings right now. And I just, I'm, you know, just, I'm okay. I'm working through it. I'm coping. That's 100% authentic. And people will tend to respect you a lot more than nothing. I'm fine when they can feel the energy going, it's <laughs> like, you know, what do you mean nothing? I'm fine. You know, that makes it feel like the other person it is something wrong with the other person because you can't be honest. But if you're just honest to that point where, you know, 100% authentic, guys, as much as it may struggle, like I am here right now owning something that I feel very embarrassed about, but maybe it can help someone out there who has icky feelings too, you know, and you know they're inappropriate. Um, but what a great, what a great healing tool to just see it as thoughts, sound, sight, touch you know those sort of things like balance it out and not to resist do not resist it like say i feel like shit right now i feel so angry right now and own that allow yourself to move through it because they do pass as you said thoughts pass feelings pass they all come and go just like the come breath and go. comes and goes yeah. it's when we decide to attach ourselves to it to hold on to it and, and then we try to control it and change it and, and we have never honored the feelings right I had a big revelation. Can I share with you about this? Please, please. Remember, thousands of people might see this too, Darcy. Okay. <laughs> like, can I share with you? I remember, that we're on camera. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so, you know, I work with little children and I have a little child who has, she has big screaming tantrums, really, really big, big screaming tantrums. And so the other day, a little, we were putting our chairs away or stacking them and she was going to stack hers and some little boy went and took her chair and stacked it for her. Oh, how sweet. Right. No, no, not for her. Not oh. about that. She went, she screamed, blame her because she wanted to stack her own chair. 
right? And she flung herself in her screaming and crying. And then the, I watched the teacher go over to her and tried to talk to her, not having it, screaming and crying. Then I watched another teacher go over and try to talk to her, screaming and crying, not having it, just screaming and crying, screaming and crying. And I'm watching, doing something else. And then finally I'm like, bing, light bulb. Because, you know, you always acknowledge a child's feelings to help them process it. So I went over there and I said, hey, did so-and-so take your chair? stopped crying and said yes really angry and I said did that surprise you you weren't expecting that were you and she said she thought about it she goes yes and she's thinking about it. I said did that really disappoint you she's looking at me I said well when you get disappointed you get angry and sad at the same time really big sad because you wanted to do the chair and really big angry because he took it. And that's called disappointment. Mm. Do you feel sad and angry? Yes, she says. Mm. Really disappointed, right? Yes. She's not crying or screaming. She's, yeah. And I said, so those are really big feelings. And she's sitting there. Now she's not talking about, she's just nodding her head. Mm -hmm. And the two of us just stood there for a while, nodding our head. And I said, oh, I know those really big feelings. And we both sat there like this for a while. And I looked at her and said, do you want to go have a snack with me? She's like, yes. And I said, wow, disappointment. That's a big thing. That showed your greatness. You really knew how to express that. Okay, let's go have a snack. She goes, okay. No more tantrum. So what it really taught me is about as adults, we often didn't learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To identify, you know, what just happened yeah. that triggered that feeling. Oh, shut about, down, be quiet, stop this. You're stop, having a stop, yep, yep, right? Yep. All the time. And so to have her just help her identify the process and the stuff that happened and to acknowledge her. Yeah. What allowed her to breathe through. And I, oh, I also told her, I said, well, you know, you, that was, those are really big feelings. That's really hard. You want to take a deep breath? And she did. I teach them all how to take deep breath. Right. Um, but for us, you know, so bam, your trigger shows up. Bam, big feeling. Bam, big, crazy thoughts. Mm. Man, what do you do? Okay. I have big thoughts. I have big feelings. This is really you know, this is really hard. This is disappointment. This is anger. This is rage. This is what well, deep sadness, hurt. I acknowledge those feelings. Yeah, I'm crying. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> because you yeah. got to acknowledge those feelings. Can't be in control of everything all the time. Healing does not mean that you don't have big feelings. Healing does not mean that you don't have thoughts and past memories that come floating for no reason to where you are. You have them and they're gonna surface in the random ways. And so you forgive yourself first. Yeah. You know, being a yoga practitioner doesn't mean you don't have big thoughts and feelings. <laughs> yeah. Right. And yeah. so you forgive yourself first for having those big feelings. And part of the way you forgave yourself was by being aware. Okay, your yeah. awareness is primo. So the most important thing you did was to have your awareness. Thank you for helping me through this uh, trigger. And it's really helped. And I remember like with, I finished breathwork school yesterday. And what I took away, one of the main things was that I am changing. I am stupid to I am beautiful. And that's one yeah, thing I should have done now. I like, cause I, I think that it was stupid. I'm seeing myself going stupid idiot rather than going, it's beautiful you have those feelings, but like, you know, come on, like just be tender with it rather than be so like, cause the, the aggressor is the, is the, the, the um, denial is the restriction or the trying to. It's, judgment. Oh, it's, it's all that judgment. All that judgment. And whereas, right. If I own it and it is part of me and it's part of my healing and yeah, that's the way it is. And it's like, that can be beautiful rather than, in so many levels, you know, beautiful, ugly. <laughs> you know, if I have to say it that way. Yeah, but it's, yeah. you know, it's a. Uh, I would also just say uh, that. Um, oh, I lost it. Damn it. it. Doesn't have to be beautiful. 
Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> beautiful. It just is. It just is. That's all it is. You know, there were big expectations. There's always big expectations when you finish a class or you and you get your certificate. Big expectations right there. You know, okay, I'm good to go. I did all this practice. I feel really good in myself. And then, bam, the universe throws you a really big test. Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. Oh, well. So expectations get tested as well. Big test. That's right? totally what happened. Yeah. That's totally what happened. Testing to see if I'm going to follow through with what I, yeah, I'm that, changing. Yeah, so that's why you can give yourself a big... Um, a big star. Yeah, I, will. star. <laughs> I will. I do. I have a child. How'd you know? Give yourself a star for the day because of your awareness. I get it. That I get is it. Primo. That is your there's your healing, is that you know, and again, it doesn't have to be beautiful and ugly. That'll come that understanding of the profound beauty in struggle and beauty in suffering. And yeah. you know, that's when you really you get up there with equanimity. When you're first that's a great way to hit one of your first tests right out of the gate. Yep, show us. Show us. I see now. Awareness. Thank you, Angels. So yeah, like put it put it in perspective, and also remind myself what I promised myself I'm going to be practicing. <laughs> right. What, what I've got to put into practice, Jemima. <laughs> like, hello, it's been oh. messed with me for hours since you said that. <laughs> like, you know. Well, anyway. you're gonna love the card I pulled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, let's bring a card. Thank you so much for that. Um, for that unraveling of the trigger and uh, ways to help. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then to just spark where it came from. Like, and it was it was a test thrown at me to practice what I decide to be gentle and kind to myself finally yeah. love okay. and kind treating yeah. all equal that's right yeah. yeah it's tricky okay card time yay what did you pull oh first of all i'm using rodley valentine's um oh the angel cards are beautiful beautiful they are, they are tarot cards that he redesigned with angels and oh, beautiful oh so i haven't seen these oh they haven't seen the tarot ones oh no i haven't seen the tarot ones yeah, you i think i've used them once I don't okay. them a lot but i okay. really like them so he, he it's a traditional tarot deck mm -hmm. formation but he changed his designs to include angels and beautiful uh, uh, softer images than the scary images of a Haindale deck or something okay it's good <laughs> Number nine, which is oh, the hermit. <laughs> okay, what a beautiful card! My gosh, wow, Isn't that beautiful. Okay, so the hermit is a really powerful card, and I think it's fun because it came out during our discussion. So, this card signals that you would benefit from spending time alone and listening to your inner voice. Meditation is essential as the path to enlightenment is an inner journey. Be silent and experience the joy that comes from seeking the truth of your own heart. Hmm. Learn to feel comfortable in your own company. After all, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. This card also signifies spiritual teaching. I find it again. So beautiful. Spiritual teaching. So it can mean that you have wisdom to impart to others. Or that it's perhaps time for you to spot, find a spiritual teacher. Sharing wisdom is part of your spiritual journey, especially right now. So the additional meanings of this card is good advice, finding or becoming a mentor, self-discovery, re-evaluation of plans, going on a spiritual quest. So he put Archangel Raziel on this card. That's who mm -hmm. this is. And it offers sage advice to spiritual seekers, including guidance about esoteric concepts, interpretations of your sleeping dreams, past life memories. So call upon Angel Archangel Raziel to help you find the richness that comes from meditation and spending time alone in contemplation. That's right. Yes, here, here. In other words, practice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it, angels. I get it. I got it. All right. <laughs> practice, practice. Yeah, that's so funny. Like, it really is crazy how I just sort of fell out of practice within 12 hours. No, you didn't. 
You no, I didn't. I forgot. Really I just forgot. Hear. You no, I, just, that I just forgot that it was to put it's into a, practice. It's a yeah, part I mean, of your practice. Part, okay. Okay. See? Uh, yeah. It's the way you reframe the words. Yep. I guess part of my practice. It's okay. Part of your practice. And I really want you to understand that practice is not perfect. Mm -hmm. Nope. It's practice. And so the good thing about practice is you're learning as you go. You're practicing. And each obstacle makes you stronger, better, you know. Right, right, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. All those things. Leaves rooms for to make mistakes, like, or to have another lesson that goes, what? Oh, hang on. Remember what I'm trying to do? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was a really great experience. And you give yourself high marks for your awareness your I love your school awareness. i'm coming to your school every day i get high marks all the time yay yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you yes you. yeah there's no failure here or mistake here none of that you have this great awareness and you can't move forward in your practice without awareness yeah. so two thumbs up <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Oh, no. Right, That's our picture. <laughs> <laughs> I pull the terrible pictures up. You all know that. Anyway, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hearing my story. Oh, and if you out there feel it, take some of these tools for healing. Thank you, Darcy, so much for your anal analyzing of the situation and allowing me to explore how to heal with it and to practice what I'm trying to do in my spiritual practice. Hey, hey. practice there's the words in there um take care guys. yeah don't forget to like share subscribe we'll see you next week thank you darcy Mwah. peace out i'll oh, see you next week for christmas week or holiday week whatever holiday you celebrate oh sound is coming yay i right, love take care bye